folks and welcome to this demonstration of my Sanyo PM2000. So this is a fairly basic digital watch which claims fame is the fact that it's only two millimeters thick and uh, so it's also quite small in the other dimensions it's 28 millimeters uh, wide and 28 millimeters tall. I'm guessing that's to help it resist the sort of bending forces you get with such a slim case so it doesn't warp. Um, and it's got these 18 millimeter lugs, which are actually quite wide for such a small narrow case. Uh, and it does look particularly like a postage stamp when you're wearing it. Um, and the clasp, it has a normal clasp on it, which is by far the th thickest part of the whole ensemble. Uh, they also did a, a gold version, but this is the, uh, the matte black version, which is my preference. And um, you've got, that's not a button, that's just a, the, the batteries behind that. That's why it stands up slightly proud. And again, you've got a battery hatch on the back there. And these are the two buttons. Uh, you've got um, date display there, uh, 20th of January. And this is the button you use to set it. So you press that once and it start, seconds started flashing and then the minutes and, the, and then you use this button there to set the watch. Just get that back to normal operation. So it doesn't have a light, it does have a slight dodgy display there, unfortunately. Um, but it is probably the thin, the cheapest way, rather, into the ultra, ultra thin watch club. So I've been doing a little bit of research into that. Um, back in the 70s, there was a bit of a race to, to, amongst manufacturers to build the thinnest watches. Uh, Seiko had produced a, a one millimeter quartz movement and uh, they had a special edition case, case which is only two and a half millimeters wide. But it's a very limited run of about seven watches, I believe, were sold in from Tiffany's in uh, New York, which achieved the goal, I guess, of getting a Seiko into Tiffany's. <laughs> That's, that was probably something they were quite proud of. Um, not to be outdone, the um, the Swiss um, brands uh, under the ETA manufacturer um, produced their own series of watches called the Delirium watches, and they were mostly branded as a Concorde. Um, but some of the other watch uh, brands like Longines um, also used the same uh, case. And the Delirium one was 1.98 millimeters. And the Delirium four was only 0.98 millimeters. But apparently it wasn't very practical to actually wear because it would bend. And uh, they were quite novel, they were quartz watches. But all the parts of the movement were embedded directly into the base, into the case back, so there wasn't a separate module. It was just um, all one thing. And I think this is probably the same. I'm not quite sure how the case is held together. I don't want to break it to try and find out. Um, more recently, Piaget, with their um, Altiplano Ultimate Concept, have produced a two millimeter mechanical watch. which in itself is impressive enough, but that is, it, actually it's also like a full size 40 millimeter case as well. So that's uh, extremely impressive. Um, but I think the ultimate record for the thinnest ever watch um, goes to a Kickstarter special, the CST-01, which uh, gave up on trying to have a rigid case and it was just a flexible metal band uh, with an ink display on it and um, no buttons. You, you, connected it to its charging base and used that to, um, which had buttons on it, to set the time and date on it. So anyway, that's it. Yeah, the Sanyo PM2000 from 1986. I hope you've enjoyed my little tour of ultra-thin watches and uh, thank you very much for watching. Cheerio!